All right, so I want to take a second. I want to talk about some of the capabilities of the new radio that Hughes had put in his motorcycle today that we watched him put in itself. Uh, so it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Those are the two big features a lot of people wanted from the GTS radio. What that means is when you plug your phone in, the safe apps, your navigation apps like Apple Maps, Google Maps, Waze, those are going to be displayed up on the radio when plugged into the USB. We also have all of our music apps, Pandora, Slacker, Spotify, Hulu, Tidal, Amazon Prime Music. I mean, the list just keeps going on. There's so many different ones. The SiriusXM app. You can do all of these apps and they'll be on screen. They're considered safe apps. Uh, at the same time, while it's plugged in, it's also going to be charging your phone and giving you these options. One big thing we get over the GTS radio, because everybody wants to talk about the few things we lose. And I'll, I'll start there real quick. This will not operate a, set, a headset. A wireless headset will not communicate with this radio. You cannot have a CB with this radio. If those two things are very important to you, this radio is not for you. Uh, this is for people who are really serious about audio and they want the new features. They want Bluetooth that connects faster. I have timed it. It's about 13 seconds to connect my phone through Bluetooth after boot up. It's about three minutes with a factory GT radio. I mean, your friends have left. You're still hoping your phone connects. We don't know if it's going to happen. So the, the other big things are things like custom colors of our icons. I think it's really cool. We, we customize these bikes. We make it your own. And so you can do that with the coloring. You can also change background images on the radio too to suit an image that you want. Here's the big part to me. Equalizer, 13 band EQ. High pass and low pass filters. So in layman's terms, what does high pass and low pass mean? If you turn on a high pass filter and you set a frequency, it's going to cut off any base frequencies below that number. So if we set a, a high pass filter at 80 hertz, and that's a very popular setting to have it on, that means our six and a half inch speakers are going to play 80 hertz and up, and the base below that is going to be attenuated down, normally in a six decibel or 12 decibel slope. So that when there's a deep bass note that plays, they still play it some, but not as loud as everything else, so it doesn't distort the music and make it sound bad. Low pass filter would be, say, on the subwoofer output. So if there was a sub in the bike, the low pass filter would block all the high notes because there's no need in sending high notes to a sub. It doesn't want to play it. It doesn't sound good doing it. So all of that is adjustable and built into the radio. We also have what's called band pass, where we can actually block high range high pass and low pass to one speaker at the same time. It's called band pass. So let's say we're doing an eight inch mid. We want it to play a range. We don't want it to go as low as a 10 or 12 inch sub. And we don't want it to be playing treble either. We're gonna enact a band pass, which that's built into the radio. Full sub adjustment. So if we add a sub, we can control it up and down. Thumb control still function, EITMS still functions. All the things that some people worry about as far as our info button is not gonna bring up oil pressure. It's not gonna bring up uh, oil life, oil temp, the things that you could do on some of the newer radios, not all of the radios did this to begin with, uh, all those things still work through your instrumentation. You still have an oil can that comes on if you have an oil pressure problem. You still have temp lights that come on, tire pressure lights. All the things that you could view in the radio, which you probably didn't normally look at, does have what we call an idiot light or dummy light that pops up on the, on this, on the gauge. So you don't lose any of those features. The big part. 13 band equalizer. Now a lot of you have bought this radio or you're thinking about buying the radio and you look at this and you have no idea what to even do with it. There's a bunch of preset EQs and I'll tell you I don't like any of them. Uh, it's nothing against the, the guys at Soundstream but when we put an amp in we're going to tune it with a digital distortion detector and we're going to bring it to its maximum clean output at full volume on the radio with a flat EQ. Now you go in and you use a preset, it's going to boost a bunch of frequencies and it's most likely going to cause our amp to clip early and it may cause you to blow a speaker. So when it comes to EQ, here's what we want you to do. If you want more bass, turn the treble down. If you want more bass, don't boost the bass. Go down with the three or four bands on the right side of the screen. If you want more treble, more high range, turn the bass down. By doing this, instead of boosting something, you're taking away what you have too much of. So your signal's gonna stay clean, your speakers aren't gonna blow, it's gonna sound much better. And here we are, you're probably wondering, what is this microphone doing hanging over top of the seat? So I've got an RTA here. An RTA is a real-time analyzer. It is listening to the sound in the room. And when we play proper test tracks, like I'm gonna play pink noise. Pink noise is every frequency at the same level at the same time. I'm gonna get a graph on my computer showing me what kind of sound we're getting out of these speakers. Now, I've set the microphone at head height. This particular system is six coaxial speakers. 
What that means is the tweeter and the mid are on the same connection. It's not bi-amped, it's not a component set, it's called coaxials. A lot of people will tell you, you need a DSP to make your system sound good. Well, if you've got coaxial speakers, you have very little adjustment that a DSP can do beyond an EQ. I'm not going to get into a huge argument or go into all the details on DSP at the time, but there are other things it does, like time alignment, and if you had a bi-amp system, you could completely control your tweeters at different levels than your mids. You'd also have the ability to go in and EQ each channel independently where we have a global EQ. We're doing the whole system at one time with the EQ and the radio. There's some benefits in competition use. Most people do it yourselfers, which is who I cater to, and people who ride their bikes, they don't have a real-time analyzer at home. It's a thousand plus dollars to buy one. They don't have that in the mic setup to even properly set up a DSP. And they're gonna spend a lot of time paying someone to do it for very minimal gain. So what we're doing on the bikes that we do, and we install the Soundstream radio, and it has a really nice EQ, we want to make sure you're getting the most out of the system. So when we're done, we're going to play pink noise, we're going to listen to it with a mic, and we're going to adjust this EQ to take away any valleys or peaks in our real-time analyzer's display. What this does is every frequency is more evened out, so that when we listen to different songs, all the songs sound good. Instead of having a system where one song really sounds good and so you play it over and over for your friends, we want every song that you listen to to sound good. That's, this is going to allow us to do that. Now you're going to hear some static, we're probably going to mute some of that out, but I'm going to start playing a pink track, a pink noise track, and I'm going to try to get you to see over here on the display what that looks like, and then I'm going to enact a custom EQ that I've just done, and we're going to see if we take some of those valleys and peaks out. You're not going to make it perfect. I'm actually showing something like 30 bands on my uh, on, on my display, and I can bring that way more uh, precise. We can go to 1 6th and 1 12th, and we can make this thing where we could spend days and days and days trying to fix everything. But on a 1 3rd octave scale, uh, I'm going to turn this on with pink noise, and I'm going to show you what it sounds like, and we're going to get back to this EQ, and we're going to do some adjustment to it. Go to USB, restart my pink noise. pause the track, what you're going to see is what the EQ looks like if it's left completely flat. So I want you to take a look at it. You'll see it looks like there's a mountain and there's a little valley and we're trying to even that out as much as we can with our EQ. So I'm going to unpause it, show it again, and then I'm going to do our custom EQ settings. Like I said, you can't make it perfect with 13 bands, but you can definitely make it a lot closer where there's not as high a valley or high a mountain or as low a valley on our display here. And I think you'll notice here in that two, actually what we had to bring down was from 200 hertz to 500 hertz, and we had to boost a little bit at about 1.25 kilohertz. So what I will do is I will take a picture of these settings in the radio that give us this close of a curve and I will save them and I'll show them to you if you want to see them. But people ask me all the time, how do I set up my EQ? What's the best EQ for my Hertz speakers? What's the best EQ for my Precision Power speakers or my Infinity Kappa Perfect speakers? When you ask that question, a lot of that is personal preference. Even if I set the EQ like we've done here to give us our best sound with all of the music we listen to, most likely there's something you listen to more than everything else. A certain genre of music that, that really brings you back to a time that you enjoy so you listen to more of that. And if that's the case, you're going to have to go in and if you think there's too much treble or too much bass, turn down the opposite sum to, to your liking. But it's really hard for me to tell you what you're going to like and what sounds good with what you're listening to from all the way over here in Tennessee. But if we do the install or if you want these specs, like this is the precision power setup that I would use. I've got another one for Hertz and a couple of the other speakers. If you'll shoot me a text, an email, whatever, I'll send you a copy of this so you can adjust it. And what we're doing is we're just flattening out that EQ a little bit more on the output side of the speakers. Now, understand when you looked at our graph, 
80 hertz and down drops off. I'm blocking that on purpose with high pass filters. The upper end of the spectrum is so high pitched, we don't want the highest point of the treble to be at dog whistle level really, really loud. So that's also being cut off some. Uh, but I think we flattened it out quite a bit with this. I wanted to go into more depth of what you can do with this many bands in an EQ. A lot more than you can do with bass and treble in that factory Harley radio. But thank you so much for watching. I just want to add this in.